This screen allows you to edit the details for your game. In the Basics category, you can update the name of your game, enter the edition, which may be the first, second, third, and so on. You can indicate the minimum number of players, as well as the maximum number of players. You can also set the playtime required to complete a game, as well as the audience. And this is selectable between 12 and up and 18 and up. Unfortunately, due to liability, we're unable to allow people to make games that are for a younger audience than 12 and up. In the marketing section, you can set a short description for your game. This information will show up in the shop when people hover over your game. In addition, you can add a full description, and this is the bulk of the text that people will see when they visit your, your game in the online shop. Below that, you'll see there's three different cool factors. These cool factors are bullet points, and they're also displayed on your shop page. Finally, there's a website address that you can enter into, and that's the marketing section. Next, we'll scroll to the top of the second column. This is the pricing section, and you can set any price you want for your game, but because of marketing strategy, all games have to end in 99 cents. So if you set a number 9 here for your price, the game will cost $9.99. The next field you'll see is cost and if you click this link you'll get to see the specific costs that are involved in producing your game. The next field is TGC. This is the Game Crafters share of the profits and this is a 30 percent stake. The designer always keeps 70 percent of the profit and TGC keeps 30 percent. The final field is the profit field and this shows you how much you're going to receive as a designer each time your game is sold. Underneath the pricing section, you'll be able to select multiple images that will show up in your game shop page. The first one is the shop backdrop. This is the image that appears across the top of your game's page in the online shop. Clicking on the paper clip icon will allow you to access the file system and upload an image. The view and shop button allows you to view your game's shop page. And underneath that is the game logo. The game logo is the small logo that shows up in the bottom left corner at the top of your game shop page. The final image is the shop ad. This appears when people are browsing the site and in the online shop. Below the shop ad is the unpublished shop preferences section. Every game created on the Game Crafter website has a unique URL. A game will not be visible on the Game Crafter website until it's published, but a designer can choose to share the game's unique URL with whoever they want. The options below control whether or not the game can be viewed or purchased by people who visit the unique URL for the game. So setting allow sales to yes means that these people could make a purchase of this game. And setting allow viewing to yes means that they'll be able to see the game's profile. At the top of the third column is the designer section. This is where you're able to choose which designer profile you want this game to be under. Once you choose one, the logo will appear here if a logo has been uploaded for that designer profile. Next, you can set up the taxonomy for your game. There's lots of different categories and several options available for you to choose from, and it's important that you choose accurate options because this is how many people will search the site looking for games that they may be interested in buying. Each one has tons of options to choose from and once you select everything that you need you can move down to the professional review section. 
This section can be really useful for a game designer because it allows you to post a quote from a professional game reviewer. If somebody's reviewed your game and posted an excellent quote in review of your game, you can post that in the quote field. You can indicate who the reviewer was and also include a URL to that review location. Now this review quote will show up on your game's shop page at the top. So it can be really great and really helpful for customers if they're considering purchasing your game. Next is the contest section. The Game Crafter holds game design contests every three to four months. Game designers who want to enter their new games into the contest can use this form. The designer just needs to click on the contest that they want to enter and they'll be all set. There's also a countdown for when the current contest is going to end. The final section on the page is the action shots. You'll see that there's a paperclip icon and by clicking this you'll load the file system and be able to select which images you want to feature. These action shots appear at the bottom of your games page in the shop. The images can be scrolled through by using these arrows to the left and to the right and various images can be displayed.